I'm going to start with a concept that I call the flaw of averages. It basically says that plans based on average assumptions are wrong on average. Famous example is the statistician who drowns in the river that's on average three feet deep. Now, to cure the flaw of averages requires what I call the arithmetic of uncertainty. Um, and I, I'm not going to tell you what the mathematicians call it, because that always triggers post-traumatic statistics disorder, or PTSD, which is one of our big uh, enemies in this process, is scaring people off. Uh, but let me define this in terms I think you'll understand. Where arithmetic tells us that x plus y equals z, the arithmetic of uncertainty says, what do you want z to be? Here are your chances. So what do I want? Well, I want there to be less than 400 COVID patients so I don't exceed my hospital capacity. Well, how are you figuring out the chances of this today? Well, that's one of the things that we're going to show you. So here's a simple uh, spreadsheet example of the flaw of averages in uh, COVID planning. Suppose we expect uh, 10 patients in our ICU, and we have an ICU capacity of 10. Well, that's great. Uh, that means these patients will all get critical care. There's, say, a 10% uh, fatality rate among, among them. Um, that means that if we really expected 10 patients to come in, the average fatalities would be one, that is 10% of the 10 patients. But, you know, if we, if we have an overflow, the number of fatalities are expected to go way up. If you have people sitting out in the parking lot who need oxygen, you, you know, if we go up a little bit from average, oh my gosh, those people in the parking lot have a 90% uh, mortality rate. Um, and so if we look at an average of 10, right, but that average comes from either nine patients which gives us 0 0.9 fatalities on average, or 11 patients. Now, with the 11 patients, 10 of them are in ICU beds, one of them is in the parking lot. So we go up to 1.9. And uh, so that's a huge difference if it goes up compared to whether it goes down. And to see all this in one place, Let's imagine there are two states of the world. Either you have nine patients or you have 11 patients. Oh yeah, on average we have 10 patients. Right. But that means you have either uh, 0.9 fatalities or 1.9 fatalities. The average of 0.9 and 1.9 is not one fatality, but 1.4 fatalities. And this same idea scales up and gets worse and uh, so that is the flaw of averages, and that's why uh, you don't want to run uh, off of average projections for hospital beds. Now we're gonna to move to another example here. The problem with what I said is that it would take a statistician to understand the distribution of uncertain outcomes of the hospital beds required. And this is where the nonprofit probabilitymanagement.org uh, comes in. We've developed an open standard for communicating that uncertainty as auditable data. And uh, Eng Wee has used this approach to extract uncertainty from the CDC forecast uh, that can be used in applications all over the uh, the country. So uh, what I'm going to do, you know, it, one way I think about it is the uncertainty is now like it's auditable data, uh, but think of it as electricity and think of calculating ch chances as like using a light bulb. So here's something I call chance calc, and I'm going to plug chance calc uh, into the wall socket and get the electricity. But Eng Wee is going to talk about how he generated the electricity from data at the uh, CDC. So um, 
I'm going to start with, uh, I'm going to select a place to put my data. And I'm going to click this button up here to get the uh, data out. And so here we have a, uh, we have a library of these things called SIPs, stochastic information packets, that contain uh, the data representing the uncertainty of daily hospitalizations. And I'm going to put in uh, 14 days worth here. And this now runs off to grab the data that Ang Wee had extracted from the CDC. So we're in a hospital here. It has a 400 ICU uh, bed capacity. And my issue is I'd like to schedule elective surgeries. Well, I don't dare, I don't dare schedule them if the chance of exceeding my 400 beds is too high. So what I'm going to do here is um, what I'm interested in is what are the chances that I am less than or equal to my 400 bed capacity. And I'm wondering, how would you calculate that today? By day, your chances, day by day of exceeding the 400 beds. Well, watch what we do. Um, so I'm going to select these cells. I'm going to click the chance of whatever button. And it's going to uh, now estimate the chances for each of these days of being less than or equal to this. Now, as I enter the data, uh, you're going to see that we don't have single numbers here. We've got probability distributions in each one. What that means is actually, I'm looking at trial one. I'm looking at trial two. You see the numbers change, trial three. Uh, I can also look at the average itself, right? But look what I have now. There's an 84% chance on day one into the future. That is, this forecast gets updated once a week from the CDC automatically, as Ang Wee will show you. So in, in like where we are right now, it looks like COVID is on the way up. So the chance of being less than 400 is dropping and dropping. Got an 84% chance that like if day one is tomorrow, okay, I can schedule elective surgeries. Uh, then it drops to 74, 66. Well, how comfortable are you? You know, risk is in the eye of the beholder. If you want to have above like a 74% chance, you've only got two days to do the surgeries. You might also ask this, you know, we've got some auxiliary beds. We've got like 50 extra beds uh, where I could run out and up this to 450. What does that buy us? Well, look, that's good. That buys us maybe into day six, if you can live with a 76% chance of not exceeding your capacity. I'd like you to think about this stuff in here as being like electricity. Again, let's go back to the trials. You know, trial one, trial two, uh, trial 432, a thousand trials in there. And I'd like Ang Wee now to describe, um, he, he had to do a lot of work to extract this from the CDC. And so I'll, I'll let him uh, take it away at this point. So hi, uh, this is uh, Ang Wee here. Um, and I created a model in Analytica that um, basically takes the COVID hospitalization forecast from the CDC uh, and basically creates a SIP library out of the forecast for the next four weeks. So uh, as you can see over here, this is basically the, the website, uh, the CDC website that, you know, um, uh, where all the forecasts kind of reside. Um, the data, you know, technically resides on a GitHub site, uh, and that's where the model pulls this information. So uh, on to details of the model. So this is the model in uh, Analytica, uh, and uh, based on the CDC forecast, it basically allows you to pull forecast for the various uh, states here in the U.S. Um, 
for the next four weeks. So for today's example, we will use California. Uh, and, and the way that works is, you know, uh, once you select a state uh, for the forecast, uh, the next thing you need to do is really just pull uh, the, you know, the forecast uh, results from the CDC uh, repository. So, uh, so by clicking the button, it goes, you know, to the internet, pulls out the data, uh, and this is really the, the the format, the raw format of the forecast uh, that is provided by the CDC. Uh, so the way it's broken down is, you know, it provides you the forecast date, uh, the target, you know, uh, number of days ahead uh, for hospitalizations, uh, the target end date, the location code, and so the geographical location code, which coincides with the drop down that you selected for the state earlier. Uh, and then basically, uh, there are uh, basically a series of quantile values uh, in the forecast data. So ranging from basically the first percentile all the way up to the 99th percentile. Uh, what the model then does is it transforms that basically into a quantile table, right? So for example, this is California, right? Uh, and then these are the dates for the forecast and these are the quantile values. And, and as you can see on this uh, chart over here, uh, this is basically, you know, um, the, you know, first percentile, 10th percentile, 50th, 90th, and 99th percentile values based on the CDC forecast. Now, uh, by itself, we cannot really use the sample pass out of this uh, um, distribution fitting yet. And the reason why is if we were to do a naive fitting uh, and to, we were to plot out the sample pass, I'm going to zero this out. Okay, so... If we were to pick the paths, you see that they are, there is no correlation between the values between day to day. And uh, based on what we know about hospitalizations, this is not true. There is actually a very strong correlation, correlation between hospitalizations uh, on a day to day basis, right? So, so what we then do, need to do that is basically come up with a serial correl uh, correlation value. Uh, which we specify here. Uh, in this case, it's 0 0.95. And then we basically resample uh, the distribution um, to come up with uh, paths that are actually correlated. So if you look at the correlated sample paths, notice that they are actually correlated based on the serial correlation factor that we provided uh, in the input. So um, what we've done then is uh, we took the model, uh, that analytical model, and put it on the cloud um, where you can basically, uh, you know, by accessing the, the URL, uh, do what I just described earlier. Uh, select a state of interest uh, for the next four weeks of hospitalization, and the data automatically updates based on the latest available forecast uh, on, you know, basically, typically it gets released on Monday evenings of every new week. So basically, once we have the forecast uh, generated, um, we can then download the forecast as a version 2.0 uh, 2 sitemap library uh, as defined in the uh, probablymanagement.org website. Okay, so uh, if you click on the button, it will prompt you uh, to save the library in the form of an Excel file uh, to a location of your choice. So. We're just going to save it and say save. All right. Once we have that, um, this can then be used as uh, a SIP library for various um, applications, including bed management, as uh, Sam mentioned, or even uh, forecasting of uh, ventilator use for ICU uh, during surges and so forth. Yeah. So thanks, Engwe. Now. Um I've logged into that same website he was showing you, and uh, you know you you can here we'll just look at the states available, right? Let's go to Colorado, uh, and once you've loaded the data, it moves very quickly from state to state. Go to Massachusetts, um, and then we uh, cl click the button, and as and we pointed out, it saves it in in this uh, 2.0 SIPMath file format. Uh, which is the open standard created by our nonprofit, probabilitymanagement.org. Um, and this model was run in a package called Analytica. Um, but you can do this stuff in Excel, in Python, uh, anywhere you like. Um, 
And uh, I mean, that's the deal with having an open data standard. Now, um, and we talked about SIP libraries. I, I should let you know what that really means. It stands for Stochastic Information Packet. And let me describe it in terms of rolling dice. So, I mean, you know, life is a crapshoot. I mean, right? Uh, and uh, uh, you do not want to practice for crapshoot with an average die that has three and a half dots on it, right? That's ridiculous. We want to keep the die rolls alive. Now, this whole process grew out of what's known as Monte Carlo simulation. What the SIPMAS standard does is it stores those die rolls as data. So I've got three dice here and these it goes down 10,000 times, 10,000 die rolls. If you are interested in learning more about this, we can't open the website up to everyone because it'll crash. But if you have a real interest in this and want to do some research around it, uh, please contact us and, and we'll give you access to the website where you can go out and scrape this stuff off and uh, use the results in, uh, in your own models. I mean, there are tools to help you do this. It, it, it's, it's not rocket science and it doesn't take uh, NASA-sized budgets. The tools are either free or very cheap. Yeah, so Ang Wee, I mean, I presume uh, beds are only one thing of consideration here. You must have all kinds of other supplies at Kaiser Permanente where you have to do this surge management. Um, and and what, what has been your experience in terms of the acceptability within your management of saying, oh yeah, we, we can't use those flat dice anymore. We we got to actually <laughs> start really rolling the real dice. What, how how has the up uh, take been on that? So it's been really really positive in terms of the reception on using probabilistic models to kind of forecast uh, you know demand for things like you know ventilators in the event of a surge. Uh, because guess what? We're we're not done with COVID yet, uh, and there's you know uh, as you have read you know, kind of uh, heard about in the media, uh, the Delta variant is definitely, uh, you know, taking no prisoners when it comes to uh, getting people into hospitals and in some cases into our ICUs, right? So uh, what we've been able to do is actually apply this forecast data from the CDC in basically the uh, SIPMAP format to come up with demand forecasting uh, for our facilities uh, to make sure that in terms of safety stock, we do not, do not run out of critical care equipment for patients who need it uh, in time for care, right? So yeah, those, there. Yeah, and those are, see, those, those are all what we call chance informed decisions, right? What's the yeah. chance that you're going to exceed your, your use of ventilators? And you know, you, you'll never get it to zero. That's one of the things you learn here. But wouldn't you rather have that chance be 5% rather than 95%? I want to make one other comment. When it comes to, well, you called it probabilistic modeling, right? That's going to trigger post-traumatic statistics disorder or PTSD. So <laughs> let me call it yeah. chance-informed decision-making. And one of the things I want to stress here is like horseshoes and hand grenades, close counts, 